Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to discuss Feral Druid's capabilities in the MDI. You know, is it possible? Can we do it? Can we attain that goal one day? I recently just competed for the Dream Mythic Masters event, which is, for any of you that don't know, is an MDI style event, similar to, say, the Keystone Masters, uh, where anybody can sign up for it, you just form a team and you get in and you kind of give it your best shots. Unfortunately, my team were only able to achieve top 10. We were a few minutes average out of making the top 8. That would have secured us kind of a live finals or, well, yeah, live viewing uh, setting and format. So unfortunately, we didn't kind of make it to that. But luckily, I was invited on to act as a caster for the event. So I'm actually currently in Copenhagen. This video is should now be live for you guys. And you probably are watching me cast the event, hopefully, as we speak. Uh, hopefully, I haven't embarrassed myself too much. And uh, and hopefully, I actually, you know, I'm doing a good job up there for you and representing Feral Druid well. I'm sure I've been the butt of many jokes. But I digress. I wanted to use this video to kind of discuss my experiences because I'm sure many of you being Feral Druid mains, maybe off meta mains thinking, well, I've watched the MDI and it's it's boring because they bring, you know, two DKs or a DK and two hunters or three hunters and oh, ZZZ, when are they going to bring a Rep Paladin and an Enhanced Shaman and, you know, whatnot. Well, even though an Enhanced Shaman, I think, actually has been played recently in a competition. But... Um, I, I can I can see how many of you might be thinking that things or thinking that and haven't had the opportunity to take part in some of these events yet. So from my experiences going into this event, I was just going to pick a comfort pick. You know, me and my team, we didn't have massive amounts of time to kind of rehearse. I only knew about a week before we got access to the tournament realms that I was going to even be competing. So we didn't have time to kind of, you know, kind of get everything together and get everything assembled as we necessarily want it. I was going in on my comfort pick of Feral Druid. I had the option of potentially playing like Demon Hunter or BM Hunter at the same time. I went into the competition thinking in my head that my team were going to exclusively want me on DH or BM Hunter and those kinds of things. But luckily I was able to kind of pull off a few dungeons as Feral Druid and kind of put a lot of time into that and get a sense of how Feral Druid felt in this. We also had like things like schedule issues. So when I'd be working, somebody else would be you know, sleeping, and then when I was sleeping, somebody else was working, and we just, we were all over the place in terms of our cohesion, but luckily we managed to get some, some good solid practice time in, I mean, I know on Sunday we hadn't even, by, by Sunday we hadn't even touched Shrine of the Storms, and we had to do the whole thing on just that day, we had, we had like 10 hours to learn Shrine of the Storms and submit all of our keys and everything, and try and get like a 19 minute Shrine of the Storms, like, executed perfectly, and, uh, and yeah, it definitely proved difficult, but it was a lot of fun. I had an incredible time across the whole, you know, the whole journey. And being able to play Feral Druid in that environment was very, very fun for me. If you actually go onto the, if you go onto Raider IO, and we're gonna see my Druid now. This isn't what we're looking at. Um, all the, oh, almost on the 5K. If you go on Raider IO and you go on Community Events, Dream Gaming, Mythic Master Season Two. Oh God, I can do this. I can do this. Oh God. I can do this. And you go on time trial leaderboards and you scroll down to King's Rest. You will see for all up for that from now until the end of time, this is secured and locked in as a Feral Druid being in this competition. So um, it was actually really, really cool and really, really fun. And you can even see that like some of our times, I mean, we were like, if we'd shaved like 30 seconds off of our time, we, we would have been top six. You know, so it's not like, oh, yeah, but sorry, you're 11th, like, you know, what are you talking about? It's like we were very close to being competitive with, you know, some very strong teams on our King's Rest time playing a, a very, very off meta comp. So I know many of you might be thinking, well, how come you guys didn't just go into three BM Hunters or three DKs and whatever? In the Dream Mythic Masters, you're not allowed to play like in the MDI, you can play with whatever you want you can you can mirror spec but in the uh, or in the dmm you're not allowed to do that and you have to um you're only allowed one of each spec you could in theory take three hunters if you wanted to but you'd have to go survival mm and bm and not a lot of people would want to do that so we found that you know once you go once you get a dk locked in you know and holy dk and once you get a bm hunter locked in well then the the remaining choices 
on just super super apparent right so you have the option of the fire mage which is great because they do a lot of burst damage the issue is that things die way too quickly especially with an unholy dk in your group for the mage to really get popping and really get ramping you, there are various ways around that like you have the mage use their cooldowns on one pull the dk on the next and then you kind of alternate and then you basically just kind of go from there and and, and you the bm hunter is just consistent damage but the fire mage isn't always 100% the best thing to play. Then you have the option of a rogue. Well, rogue is great for all of the rogue skips and mechanics and all that kind of stuff that rogue can offer in the control, but it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. So that is potentially kind of off to the side. And then what about Demon Hunter? Well, Demon Hunter, I would say, is probably most likely the obvious choice because it brings control for the group. It brings very high levels of burst damage and kind of semi-decent consistent damage. And uh, it brings things that nobody else really... Other, uh, nobody else really brings so darkness and being able to blade dance certain mechanics and being able to meta stun and have the aoe stun and and those kinds of things to be very useful also having their cage is very very strong so there's a lot about demon hunter that actually probably makes it the most obvious third choice for a dps spot but beyond that like if you don't have any of those then it's kind of you could bring anything you could bring a rep on and you can bring an enhance you can bring a feral druid it doesn't really matter because Everyone else is going to kind of just be fulfilling the same role of just kind of doing something whilst the DK gets their cooldowns back. I mean, and if you're wondering kind of what some of these polls look like, uh, I'll take you kind of through how this all looks. So we basically try and condense the polls of this dungeon down to as, f as few as possible. And we try and chain as many of these polls into bosses as we possibly can. Now, in this pool alone, we have maggots with a massive AoE damage ability. We have lashes that are going to be stunning people that need to be healed through or interrupted. And we have blood swarmers who are going to be silencing casts if their spells complete. And also, they're going to be randomly targeting people in the group and smacking them down. And could potentially, you could get three blood swarmers on your healer and your healer just gets dropped. So... They are very, very scary pulls, and you have to be very, very um, careful when you're pulling these. But you can see kind of the aim of the game here is to get everything pulled and grouped up, and so we'll start kicking our targets and stunning things until we're ready, and then we pull everything in together, and then we burst it down. You can see I end up using focusing arrows here, and I just start blasting up on the DPS meters. The hunter has been popping off since the beginning of time, and then suddenly the DK comes in and everything drops from about 60% health to dead in about 4 seconds. And that's really what you... That was like a p perfect pull for us because no, I didn't get stunned during my focusing iris. Um, nobody died. And so yeah, so that's really, really cool. What I'm bringing in this composition, like you can see once the DK gets ramping, nothing really stops him. And so really the aim of the game is to get the DK ramping as, as much as we can. And in between, we want to just kind of kill mobs as quickly as we can until the DK's abilities are back up again and we can do another burst phase. And so I found that in this composition, having my single target priority damage was actually very powerful. Feral does bring very strong single target, not as strong as, you know, as, as some other specs in there that are specialists, like say a fire mage, but it still does bring very, very strong single target and it allows us to get back to these massive juicy pulls that we really want to be focusing on quicker so going into this competition i actually ended up playing some demon hunter so for our shrine i didn't actually get any practice on the feral druid which was a bit of a shame and we were so limited in time i couldn't even humor the thought we had to just blast with you know the best comp that we possibly could because otherwise we weren't going to make the competition you know and unfortunately we didn't anyway but i did manage to play feral for king's rest and actually found it outperformed me on my demon hunter when I also did King's Rest on the Demon Hunter. So um, depending on who you are as a player, like you might actually find that a comfort pick can end up being the go-to call. But yeah, I, I in terms of answering this question of is Feral capable of being in the MDI? Should it be in the MDI? Will we ever see it in the MDI? I mean, we don't have any more MDIs for the rest of BFA. So I would say probably not for BFA. Will we see it and say like, you know, Dream Mythic Masters or KSM? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. You know, that could be that could be really cool. I don't think like I, I I think if you're not allowed to mirror spec, then I think that bringing a feral is a reasonably comfy choice. Like it's it's fine. 
but you have to like if your team are like very good i think you can pull it off but i think ultimately in say the finals the grand finals feral you just can't take one because it's not as good as say a demon hunter equivalent right um and it's not going to do as much damage consistently as a bm hunter it's not going to do as much peak damage as a dk so it's just not going to compete with those specs however going into shadowlands part of me thinks that feral druid could end up being pretty desirable and i'll explain why so unholy dk is probably still going to be doing what it's doing now which is a lot of mass aoe damage funneled into single target damage but bm hunter and fire mage are both gonna look like they're gonna drop off a bit now whether that ends up happening completely i don't know only time will tell but bm hunter is losing all this corruption and it's losing its essences and, and as and whatnot which allow it to be so powerful and same with fire mage really so that incredible single uh, or that incredible consistent damage from bm hunter and that incredible burst damage from fire mage are probably not going to exist anymore so that definitely opens up room for other specs to enter the fray and the really cool thing when it comes to feral druid is that primal wrath and thrash are both going to be uncapped potential and there are some really cool legendaries. I mean, I can show you now. There are some really, really cool legendaries that could end up seeing us be very strong in that environment where, you know, these shoulder pads where the more mobs that you have means the more mobs that are getting hit by Primal Wrath, which means more rip procs that can then give you Ferocious Bite for free. And these Ferocious Bites hit very, very hard. You can funnel a lot of your gearing into making Ferocious Bite hit very hard and your rip hitting very hard with mastery builds and, and haste pro um, um, and going into a haste build as well to get you know um these big this big rip damage and these big consistent ferocious bites but the more mobs you have the more procs of ferocious bite you're gonna get which means more priority damage so it kind of works like a scuffed dk if you will but the great thing is is that this is not cooldown reliant you could do this every single pull without fail and always be able to target this priority mob which looks really really cool uh and you know I've, I've been doing some testing with this and i get like i can get four or five ferocious bites literally chain one after the other one after the other um if you have enough mobs to to offset this so it's it's looking like this could be a really cool option for feral obviously our defensives are still looking very strong um we're gonna have a lot of the same toolkit the things we are kind of missing are innovate and trends that might be very very nice but in an MDI style or KSM style, DMM style, Innovate's not too much of a problem and neither are Trent's really. So, um, part of me thinks Feral could be seen. Maybe it could be seen in a, in a non-mirror format. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets picked up. But let me know in the comment section what you think of this video. You know, what do you think about uh, kind of Feral Druid and being a competitive spec in a fully like MDI style format? Uh, is there anything you'd like to kind of see added to our toolkit or whatnot or changed or, you know, how you think or what things you think might play out that might make Feral viable in this format? But yeah, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you for the next one.